military gave the soldiers a purpose. They are told what the mission is, and the soldiers, as a collective team, work together to complete the mission. Then soldiers transition to a society where they have to find a sense of purpose, figure out what to do for themselves, and who they can love and who will love. They often find it easier to isolate themselves from the world which makes it difficult for soldiers with families who don't understand what they just experienced. So over a decade, each of you been in the military. So you can say coming home, um, was the transitional process hard? Uh, for, for me, it was a little different. You know, um, I was activated or deployed in 2005. Um, I did a year of um, deployment in Iraq, came back, I was going through some turmoil in my life, you know, divorce. So uh, that's how I actually got to Houston. I was in, flew into Fort Hood and eventually was recruited to come here to help train other soldiers. So the transition wasn't that difficult because I still had my active duty life. I think if I would have come off active duty and gone to the civilian world, it would have been a lot different. But fortunately for me, it, it wasn't that bad. It was actually a blessing in disguise because I had the active duty. And then as I retired, I, I was still involved in the civilian world. So it, was, it wasn't too bad for me. It was, it was a transition, but it wasn't as hard as it could have been. For me, it was the total opposite. It was almost, um, it's almost like overnight. One minute you're serving and you're doing your job, something that you love, and then the next day you're out and you're lost and you don't know what to do. Because uh, I was actually injured in Iraq um, twice, and then the second time was when it was pretty much it was a wrap. So for me, I came home with like no clear agenda, no thought of uh, what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. It was just kind of like, all right, thank you for your service. You're free to go. And so did you gentlemen um, suffer with any issues coming home? Oh man, where do we start? Uh, for me, I think the biggest thing for me was like uh, anxiety, PTSD of course, um, being injured, I have a traumatic brain injury, nerve damage and things like that, but a lot of anxiety. Um, I really didn't trust a lot of people, uh, especially because when I would talk about being in the military, it always came back to, you know, Oh, how was it over there? Was it, you know, just like it was on TV? Did you kill anybody? Did you kill anybody? <laughs> um, if so, how did you kill him? Or did you see Saddam? And, you know, just all of these different things because I, I went to Iraq. Um, so for me, it was a lot of that uh, almost kind of being, um, I was very reserved, almost to the point where it was like I didn't go anywhere, didn't want to talk to anybody other than like my wife and kids and certain family members and stuff because their prior military service. And for me, you know, I had some of the same PTSD issues. Um, I was a combat commander in Iraq, and so I happened to lose just one soldier of 128. And that was just catastrophic for me, because I would, I made a deal with myself, I'm taking these soldiers in, we're going in, we're doing our job, and we're all coming home. So that played a big part in terms of my PTSD and my anxiety and my guilt that I felt in terms, uh, and it carries to this day, and it's, it's been you know, 13 years, almost 14 years. So um, I had those issues to try to get over. Um, of course, my family dynamics had changed. I had kids, um, and uh, I came to Houston with just a duffel bag. I didn't know anybody, nothing. I was just starting off fresh and new, which was really good for me because I, I just needed a new start. Like when I first got out of the military, you know, I was going on 21 mm -hmm. so to get out and try to go be like to get service at the VA yeah. hospital and you have all the other veterans looking at you like where did you serve and why are you here and you know this is for veterans and they think and look at you like just because you served and you were younger that you don't necessarily qualify as being a veteran and it's just like, I serve just like you serve. So just because my age is different, not knowing, I went into the military when I was 17. So just because I'm younger and I get out and, and go and seek treatment at the VA hospital, I have every right, just like everyone else, 
Um, so that was one of the things that I ran into um, after being treated like that a couple times at the VA. Then I stopped going, and I didn't receive any treatment for close to five or six years from the VA. After you came out? After I came out. I went a couple times, and the looks that I was getting, even when one of the doctors made the comment, like, you should have, you should be working. You should have health insurance from another provider. Why are you using the VA? Like, it just left me feeling like, okay, maybe I just shouldn't use the VA. And I stopped going. And then I ended up getting a job, and I had health insurance through that job. So it just really made me just really like, okay, I don't want service. I don't want service at the VA. Which you shouldn't feel that way. Because you served. And you, yeah. You feel, yeah. So you shouldn't have to pay for health insurance when it's provided for you. Exactly. So um, I'm finally at the point now, like, I'm comfortable with going. And I don't think I that you're judged as, as much as you were then. Because I see a lot of younger people in the VA. It's more of a diverse crowd as mm-hmm. far as the age pool. Um but that was one of the hardest things, like trying to seek treatment and want help, but you're being looked upon like with yeah. so many dirty looks. Yeah. Wow, yeah. you dirty looks because you're 21 <laughs> years old. That's crazy. Going to the VA. Going to the VA. Like, wow. The time she told us all these, you know, I'm going to tell you now, when you get out, you're just going to be working at Burger King. That's where you're heading. <laughs> so you need to stay in. And I was wow. like, wow, Burger King, that's the only option that I'll have. And she was like, you'll see, you'll see, because you'll be back. Because a lot of people don't survive when they get out. Wow. So I had a couple of friends, and they decided to stay in because they were like, I'm scared. You know, maybe I'm not prepared. Maybe I didn't prepare enough for this. Um, so I was just like, well, you know, I wasn't working at Burger King before I went in. I had a job at the bank before I went in. So if anything, I know I'll at least be able to go back to the bank. So right. I'm getting out. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was the craziest thing because I just couldn't believe she told us yeah. that. And she was really serious. Yeah. Um, so I got out. And when I first got out, um, I took like six months off. I didn't work because I had a, a, my daughter was like six months, so I just stayed home and I went to school online, and um, th- that's pretty much how I did my transition when I first got out. Wow. So, so they, so they, do they try to keep you in the military? Is that what it is? Uh, at the time, yes. Mm-hmm. At the, I don't know how it is now, mm-hmm. but at the time, they do a lot of threats, <laughs> and it's not a good wow. way of keeping you in. It's just like, uh, it's no, crazy. You're not gonna survive. Like, which some people and they get out and they do struggle mm-hmm. because you're used to having a paycheck, a steady paycheck, come in every two weeks, whether you work the whole two weeks or not, you're still gonna get paid. You have all these holidays, you have a thirty day vacation. So, you know, it's up to you to decide, okay, what's more important? Do I wanna get out? Do I wanna stay in? But it's no one there. Um, to really help you come up with a plan and be like, okay, you're getting out. You know, like myself, if I was would have had someone helping me, I should have came up with a plan like six months before I got out to be already be in school mm-hmm. and have my military benefits starting up by the time I got out. But you go to TAPS class, I went like a week before it was time for me to get out. So they help you with your resume and that's it. It's no job skills. It's no, let me help you. Okay, you were a quartermaster in. Let me help you find a job that's in that field. Now, maybe things have changed now, but when back then, no, it was not. It was just like, okay, you're out. Figure it out. When a soldier comes home to their family, they often feel misunderstood. They have to adjust to the family's routine and figure out how they fit in. Soldiers who don't have a support system find it easier to live as if they are still in the military. They will sleep outside on the street, they will sleep in the woods, or they'll make a home far away from people. Some soldiers feel becoming a civilian is another war they don't want to endure.